Welcome back uh, to the NATO Public Forum. My name is Marvin Newman. I'm a journalist as well, uh, and I'm from Germany, and I'm not sitting here alone, uh, luckily. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been very boring. Um, I'm here with uh, Baiba Braje. She's the foreign minister of Latvia. Uh, nice to have you here. Hello. Great to be here. So the NATO, obviously, is the, the, the topics are heavy, and I would say, because we have five minutes, let's start off with a heavy topic, in fact. Um, as a foreign minister of Latvia, um, you're very close geographically to the whole situation with Russia and Belarus as well. Let's start, start off with the question, how realistic do you think actually an invasion of Russia would be uh, into the Baltics, actually, if, if there would be no NATO, if NATO would change, if, if, if it would reduce power? Well, the Baltic states like Finland, like Poland, we are external border of both the EU and NATO. And Norway has had a border with Russia uh, and is one of the founding members of, of NATO. So as NATO, we feel pretty clear that our deterrence and defense sort of concept and capabilities are sufficient for Russia to know that there's no chance they would be invading NATO and winning it. So NATO is stronger than Russia. So that is that is both known and clearly demonstrated to Russia. We are a defensive alliance, so we don't have aggressive intentions against any country, including Russia. But also we are very clear that uh, we are strong in terms of both capabilities and intent to defend if necessary. So currently Russia is fighting in Ukraine, so their capabilities next to our borders are insufficient for a military threat against NATO. And uh, our main task currently is to really degrade Russia's military capabilities so they would not be able to mm. reconstitute those capabilities. Tell us the situation about Latvia. How urgent do, feep, uh, do, do people in Latvia feel about, feel about uh, defense weapons, feel about the NATO? Uh, we feel very strongly, first of all, about our own security and defense within NATO. So we are contributing more than 3% of GDP to defense capabilities. So very strong uh, procurement program, but also working with allies, buying from Germans, from Americans, from, from many others to ensure that we do our share and we contribute. But we also provide a lot of assistance to Ukraine because Ukraine is fighting for all of us. So it's 1% of GDP approximately goes to Ukraine. And that's not only military aid, but also humanitarian, financial, medical, and all types of things. And people are doing a lot. Each of the Latvians are contributing anything they can, starting from knitting uh, socks uh, for the winter to making uh, all types of uh, uh, nets for hiding tanks and, you know. Even two years after, like, everything yeah, started. Absolutely. Off. I donated my private car to the, to the uh, Ukraine armed forces. So, you know, that is quite typical mm. what people do. We also have a special program uh, by the government where confiscated cars from drunk drivers are sent to Ukraine. Interesting. So there's all types that, of stuff that is happening in Latvia. And we do it because we genuinely believe yeah. that Ukrainian victory is essential, not only for the NATO, for the Baltics, but for the whole world, as we today heard from also partners in Indo-Pacific, because China is watching it. Everybody is watching it. I'd be interested because I'm from Germany and because I can observe like the whole German politics and how right slowly things are moving and decisions are made. How do you see that? How do you see Germany's position and, and German politics in delivering weapons, for example? Germany is the Zeitenwende that has happened, uh, both in terms of really building up German own defense industry capabilities and what is needed in Germany to ensure that there is no misunderstanding by Russia or any other uh, possible challenger, that Germany is a strong NATO member. Uh, so that's good. Um, I think internal security in Germany also now is quite a priority uh, to understand the threat. We have seen various efforts at sabotage, killing dissidents done by Russian agents, uh, cyber attacks on political parties or other, other institutions. So Germany uh, is, is leading the way also on the, way, on the help to Ukraine. So it's, it's high respect for mm. Germany and what Germany is doing. Is, is, is Chancellor Olaf As for the slowness, yeah, the, we are democracies. In democracies, <laughs> we have checks and balances. This is not an authoritarian state in any of the countries where 
the ruler can say we will all do this or we will all form one NGO, we will all, all form one TV channel. Yeah. That's not the way democracies work. I mean, I mean, part of reality is also because the German Bundeshaushalt, so like the money, you know, uh, every ministry gets um, the the uh, um, uh, Ministry for Defense. They wanted to have 10 billion euros for next year. They only get roughly two, so not much of, of what they wanted. Critics say that Zeitwende, which which you mentioned, is actually not happening as as it should be. Um, still, is Chancellor Olaf Scholz someone you trust? Absolutely, if he's democratically elected German leader. Of course, we trust him, and. Uh, there are constitutional court imposed limits on how German budget can be used and formed. So the government has to respect that. It's not like they have much leeway in terms of uh, avoiding that. But uh, clearly, Satan Vende is happening. Yes, there is money coming into the defense. It has been underfunded by many of NATO members for a while because it seems that there was no threat at some moment. But after Russia's invasion, the first invasion into Ukraine in 2014, Already things started to change, and now, of course, after the invasion, the massive aggression against Ukraine in 22, mm. the the changes across the board because the military, the military threat, the possibility of war, the war that is that is conducted by Russia in Ukraine concerns us all. Bye bye, Braje. Thank you so much for being here, being at the NATO Public Forum and talking to me uh, about the NATO. Thanks for watching and uh, you can tune in uh, next time. And thank you so much for having thank me. Thank you so much. We are NATO. We are stronger together. Thanks. <laughs>